Every time you go there, you gotta pick up, see what the latest deals are, see what else I don't need. Scored a deal though, normally 50 bucks on for 30. So we got 30 bucks for the brake pump, four bucks for the container, and our new mascot. <laughs> hey pup. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Go ahead. Doodle bud. So we got some bits. I'm gonna make a vacuum chamber. Piggy, no longer working. So uh, yeah, I mean, I've never done this. So what I'm not gonna do is fiddle fart with this, make the finished product, work out all the kinks, and have a perfectly working vacuum chamber. Uh, and we're gonna do it together because maybe you want to make one. <laughs> we're, maybe we find out. Don't. This is a terrible idea. I don't know. So we're going to do it together. This is from the dollar store. I am suspect. It's a garbage little gasket, so I don't know. I am expecting I'm going to have to use some type of sealant or something on there as well. We'll give this a go. So this is just used, if you've never used one before, for uh, clearing out your brake lines. So if you got to put a new brake fluid, you got to pump out fluid to get the air out, get the air bubbles out. So it comes in a kit. You got your little attachments there to fit onto your calipers. And of course, you got some hose. This is the little reservoir it pumps the fluid into. We're, I guess maybe if you have a tiny pen, you could potentially use this and just a fit in like this. So, hose here, drill a hole into the lid, fix the fitting on there somehow, like that. And so the lid will be on there, seal that up. And then we uh, start pumping some stuff up. I do not need uh, to pull a whole atmosphere and get a perfect vacuum for what we're doing. Can I pull a vacuum and will it stay? It, uh, it does have a nice little release valve, which is handy. So if you're going to make one, you want to have some type of release valve. I don't think it's too much that you have to pull. It's very little, just a few PSI, maybe like five PSI tops kind of thing. We got a crack. I should have, shouldn't have done this in front of the camera. So you want to put a piece of wood under that when you drill it, and you should avoid that problem. So the biggest decision now is the adhesive. Do you just use some hot glue? Get a glue gun? Do you get some caulking? You got kicking around the house when you're doing the bathtub? Do you go get some gasket maker? 10 glorious watts of power for your pleasure. I'm sure this should get the job done. All right, so hot glue gun, I figured might as well. Oh. <laughs> Trying to get this on camera. This is gonna be a nightmare. Can maybe give it a spin? Get all the glue in there. Okay. I don't <laughs> Maybe that ruined it, I don't know. Doesn't take too long to dry. So before I go investing a lot of time in this container, I thought let's just first see what I'm dealing with. Let's give it a blow. <laughs> Is there even a point? But let's see. I bet I could maybe get a vacuum while I'm in the water. Let's. Let's see what happens. Oh, the gauge is moving. What do we got? Mm, it's falling a little bit, but not too bad. We got about seven inches of mercury. I gotta get it to, I think about eight or so to simulate an airplane. So we can do it underwater. Uh, it's not going to make the best for viewing. I'd want you to see the pen while it's in the container because I want to do a time lapse to see it leak. So I'm going to switch containers, but let's just see what we can do. Okay, that's good enough for now. Uh, I think I'm going to use a jar. Once the water came in and kind of filled the gaps, that's a fair amount of water we took on. I guess if you really want to stick to this, 
you could keep it flat level, put like a little rack. So the water's down below, your pens can sit on top. But I still think this is not a good idea. So I think I'm going to go with this jar instead. The problem with that lid was all the corners because it's not a uniform seal. So it was good around the, the, the edges, but the corners of the air was coming out like crazy here. We're applying proper pressure to get a seal all the way around. Have it in the jar. Oh, let me go out here. Also with the jar, I guess we can also have the pens upright. So depending on how you store them on their side, I can lay it flat. If you want to store them upright, nib up, nib down, we can do a jar. So let's do that. I'm going to drill a hole in there and uh, I think this will be the ticket. Okay, so here's what I got now. I got the hole in the jar lid. Of course, it's not on center. To do that, I used a step drill, which is handy. If you don't have one of those at home, yeah, you're going to have to fiddle around with that. I uh, wanted something a little more secure with the pipes because you're taking on and off and those little plastic fittings here, they can't really take much. There's nothing to anchor and I don't like the glue system. So if you go to Home Depot and the section where you go to install a dishwasher, there's all these nice little brass fittings. So uh, I got the, where is it here? There we go. So it's got the quarter inch hose adapter on there. So quarter inch to three eighths pipe thread. And then I got a three eighths to half inch. So this is essentially going to be my nut. I chose this because it's got a decent surface. A lot of the other ones, it was very thin wall. There was one fitting I wanted. They didn't have it. But uh, so I'm going to put this through the top, this guy up through the bottom. I found these gaskets sitting around that are for your garden hose. And I thought, well, why not do that as well? Put one here, stick it through. When it comes out the other side, snug her up. Maybe we don't have to get the glue out. Okay, so here's the setup. Snug those up top and bottom. We got the gaskets. I got a good feel. You know, I thought might work. This just might do it. No adhesive. Let's see how this goes. Uh, got to have a sample. Let's put a marshmallow in there. If this works, it should swell up. Okay, let's get you an angle. We're getting a suction. Way to an atmosphere. Pretty good. Hey, I gotta, I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed how well those worked. That worked out awesome. So no glue, no sealers, just a couple parts and those uh, garden hose gaskets, and it worked fantastic. So. Yeah, version one quickly showed me. <laughs> so the problem, whoops, bump in there. Um, the problem with this thing, it actually was decent along the sides, but there's no force at the corners. And so what happens when you go to pull the vacuum, this goes down and it's going to pull these up. And it, it, I mean, this thing is cheap and garbage anyways. But um, and the other thing I didn't like, this whole business of putting the hole in there and you glue gun it, now that thing's wiggling it. You gotta pull the holes off, it's kinda tight to to do it, so I, I'd think this would just come loose at some point, so. There, we're done with that one. But uh, this is actually really great, because if you break the jar, you just get another jar, you already got the lid, so that's cool. If you, uh, you know, break the lid, they're, they're easy to make as well, easy to get. And so the reason this works so well, like I was mentioning, you're pulling from the center and it's equal pressure around the whole thing. And I didn't even come close to hitting dead center on this thing. So um, you can be off a bit too, but yeah, equal distribution of force. Yeah. So we can simulate flying on an airplane right here, the comfort of my desk. And yeah, so these are the, if you want to build one at home, so here's, here's what's going to happen. Um, I will I will do a, a one pen tonight, and I, this is going to have to be an ongoing series because there's so many variables. So I am going to encourage everyone who is super interested in this. I showed you how to make it. You can make one at home, right? So whatever with a jar, free, like pretty much. You probably got one kicking around. If not, they're mega cheap. 
you get the little uh, there, the little kit comes with all the stuff you need. You can use one of these fittings and glue it in. You can do that, um, but it's just so finicky. So these are only a couple bucks. These fittings here, and they fit the quarter inch hose, and the O rings are super cheap. So you find these at the Home Depot or whatever your store is near where you go to install a dishwasher. So you can get those anywhere. So what we're going to do, we'll fire a pen in there and I'll go over a little bit of the math, how much vacuum we need to pull to simulate an air fly, uh, flying about 36,000 feet cruising altitude. Okay, so let's just show you real quick. Here you are at uh, sea level. We got the water here. Right, your elevation is zero, and your airport's right there. And you're gonna take off, go to cruising altitude, and then come back down. So we're at zero feet. Cruising altitude is typically around somewhere 36,000 feet, and the pressure, right? So when you're at sea level, there's a force on you. It's the weight of all the air, the atmosphere. Sitting out, light, air is light, but when there's a whole lot of it, it does weigh something. So it exerts a force that we call that air pressure. Okay. Here on Earth, it's one atmosphere because that's our atmosphere. And that works out too. There's a lot of different uh, units to measure this. Uh, the little dial gauge we got is like 30 inches of mercury, the old school way. Uh, it's also about 14.7 PSI, pounds per square inch. There's kilopascals, there's millimeters of mercury, there's all the different units. But that's the pressure you start off at. The plane climbs, goes to 36,000 feet because you're higher up, there's less atmosphere, means there's less pressure. So now it's usually around like 3.3 .3, uh, PSI. That's the air pressure up there, so quite a bit less. All right, so well, what's the deal with pressurizing the cabin? Why don't, you know, what's what's going on here? So the, the cabin, the airplane, air pressure here, you go, well, let's just get it back to regular air pressure. Let's make it 14.7 PSI. Well, now you have something called a pressure differential, okay? And so there's pressure being pushed down onto the, the the main fuselage the body of the airplane and the bigger this difference the more stress there is too much stress the thing comes apart we can fix that we can make it stronger but stronger means more weight which means more fuel blah 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 which means air travel costs more money so we we make a compromise so instead of pressurizing the air cabin to regular sea level air pressure where you left they run it at about 11 to 12 psi so the difference is going to be between the regular air pressure and what's inside the cabin so between we'll we'll make it the largest extreme 11 so if you're 11 psi inside the fuselage and inside the air cabin that's where you left that'll be the difference so we're looking at like 3.7 psi that's the pressure difference. So when you have a bag of chips or something and they they get all kind of messed up from the airplane, uh, that's what's going on. And depending on the pressure inside the bag, some stuff will kind of suck in or some stuff will expand. So we're after a 3.7 PSI vacuum. This gauge isn't in PSI. It's got a finer resolution. Whoops. So it's either inches of mercury or millimeters of mercury, HG, that's uh, mercury in the periodic table. So 7.5 inches multiplied by 25.4 if you want your metric. So let's put a pen inside the chamber. What will be the first pen to go inside our chamber and be our test dummy? Well, it has to be none other than the Mont Blanc 149. So I'll do one run with it with the cap on and another one with the cap off. I'll have it vertical, a little bit of an angle here. And I know, cause we can do sideways, we can do upside down. <laughs> There's too many variables, but we'll just do that first. So we'll give it a run, sitting like this. I cleaned out the cap. I'm gonna wipe the nib off, whoops, hit the microphone. 
I'm going to wipe the nib off one last time. I, I cleaned the cap out already to double check, so there should be no traces of ink anywhere in this pen. We're going to start pumping, and so we're going to pull it to, what did I say, 7.5 inches or 191 uh, millimeters. So uh, here we are, we're climbing. We're on an airplane and we're climbing. Maybe we're at 5,000 feet. Oh, we're getting close to cruising altitude. We're at 24,000. Get ready for the snacks, they're coming. Okay, here we go, folks. We are just a little over target. So maybe we're at like 38,000 feet. There was a better jet stream up there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to let this sit for a while. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know, five, ten minutes, something. And then we'll, un we'll vent it, and then we'll see how it looks. Okay, we are now going to depressurize. Here we go. Oh, sneak peek, by the way, at the Ranga. It just came in. All right. Oh. My, my little precious baby how did you do now I think I'm going to have to do like a few pens at a time and we soak them for uh, at least 30 minutes I would say an hour or two to do a real test but let's let's check this out let's see the, the dust particles from the wipe in it so far nib looks clean all right, let's check the cap. See nothing. Okay. <laughs> in there. Clean. Well, that's okay. Let's take the cap off and repeat, and see if we're still squeaky clean. All right, all aboard. Please be sure your tray tables are in the upright position, and so are your fountain pens. Let's start climbing. There we go. And we're back. Okay, so it holds its pressure really well too. I'm super impressed with this thing. Pen is in there. Let's uh let's begin the landing process. Okay. Oh getting this pen out of here. Okay, it's clean. So again, happy about that. That's cool. Does that mean you can now go fly with this bad boy with ink? We got to do a lot more testing. So there's going to be all sorts of things we're going to do here. So essentially what we can do now is simulate traveling around the world with any pen you want. Cost you a couple bucks and uh, put a pen in there. Nothing worse than taking your favorite pen with you somewhere and it leaks everywhere. So you can, you can plan ahead. You can trial your trip. Uh, you know, you can put it in there for 24 hours if you have a crazy long flight and you want to know how your pen does. So I don't think anyone else has done this type of test before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this. I'm going to try to anyways. Anytime I do a new pen review. So the next one will be the Ranga. You know, I give you dimensions and weights and comparisons and how it writes all this stuff. We're also going to tell you how well does this travel on planes. And so since I came up with it, I don't mind if other channels will now do this and they make their own little uh, vacuum chamber. That's fine. We can all share. But uh, I always wanted to have a unit in my name. I always wanted to name and discover a unit. So we're now going to have a standard test. We'll call it the D S P T. So that will be the Doodlebud standard pressure test. Standard pressure test. The Doodlebud standard pressure test. We can call it the D spit. <laughs> How did it do on the D spit? Well, I got a 6.5. So, boom. That's our, our test going to be. That's the name of the test, the D spit, the Doodlebud standard pressure test. And we'll give it a scale. I gotta figure out the units. Is it just a zero? Is it a simple 
zero or one, pass, yes or no, or, you know, will there be divisions and will one to 10 or whatever it's going to be. And it, you know, if, if it uh, barely leaked at all, maybe, you know, nothing, it gets a perfect 10. If it just showed a, a hint of something or just a, a one drop came out, maybe that's an eight. If it just was a mess, it gets a zero or a one or something like that. But we'll figure that out. And I, I got to figure out what the units are. Maybe it's just D spits. I don't know. But that's what we're going to do now. That is going to be a new standardized D spit will be done on the pens for the reviews. So you can know not only about the pen, how it writes, how it looks, nib options, threads, all those fancy things. How does it fly? So there are literally like thousands of combinations. So we have to have some sanity to the process. So, you know, we'll do things like the cap on and off. We'll do the different types of filling pens, what it's like with a cartridge, the converter, a piston filler, a vacuum filler, a aerometric, a vac filler. I have a lever filler. I can I'll only do the ones I have. Uh, we can do eyedropper as well. I, I just, that will be a terrible idea. I can tell you right now. Um, they will do different amounts of time. You know, how long we're going to keep it in the vacuum. We can do different inks. Um, we'll do, oh wait, or do you do it all the way full or half full? What's, what's the best? Should you have a full fill in your pen or just a half fill? Again, there's a million permutations of this and all sorts of pens, you know, put requests in the comments. I will fulfill what I can, but I showed you how to make one. So, you know, I won't be able to appease to everybody. So you can make one super cheap and play around uh, with yourself like I play around with myself a lot. Uh, but there you go. Doodle bud. That was a fun one. That worked out well. I'm, I'm, I was pretty impressed. So it begins. And uh, there will be a series doing all sorts of different testing on this, you can imagine. Thanks for stopping by. Likes and subs, subscribes, comments, shares, all those good things. I appreciate it. It helps support the channel so I can do stuff like this.